Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the HJC i71 helmet. Twenty twenty three is a big year for HJC. They've got quite a few new models for us to review, and this is one of them, the I seventy one. It takes over from the I seventy, and it's a mid price helmet with a plastic shell, an internal sun visor, and it's also got the capability to integrate HJC's latest generation of intercoms. In plain colours, it's one hundred and ninety nine pounds ninety nine as we record this, and it's two two nine ninety nine if you want a more colourful design like this PK yellow. I've spent a few hundred miles on the road in this one, so I can run through the details you need to know and also give a bit of insight on what it's like out on the road. HJC called the shell material for the i71 an advanced composite of polycarbonate. To the rest of us, that just means it's got a plastic shell. They also call it lightweight, but our scales show this medium-sized i71 weighs in at 1,745 grams. Now that's 230 grams more than the i70 it replaces, and it's about the same weight as HJC's i90 flip front, and I'd expect this sort of helmet normally to be lighter than a flip. It's not a beast. Some helmets weigh in at over 1800 grams and the weight didn't cause me any real big problems when riding for a couple of hours at a time, but it doesn't meet my definition of lightweight and I could actually tell it was a little bit weighty. Now where I have been more impressed with this helmet is in the ventilation department. There are vents at the chin and on top, as you'd probably expect. The chin vent slides open and shut and this directs air to the inner surface of the visor. I found it to be effective in my time wearing this helmet. I rode two bikes while I was reviewing this lid, my own Yamaha FZ1 Phaser and also a Suzuki GSX-S1000 GT. Both of those bikes have screens, but that didn't stop a good flow of air coming through to freshen up the interior. The top vent is just as simple. Slide the switch back to open it and then forward again to close. Opening that exposes two holes down to the interior and then there are channels in the EPS impact liner that allow the air to flow to the back of the lid and out through two exhaust outlets. Again, I found this pulled through a good amount of cooling air on both bikes I rode while wearing this helmet. The visor for this helmet's new and so far this is the only helmet it's used on. The mounting is simple and it's very easy to remove it and refit it. Between fully open and fully closed though, there's only one proper intermediate step and it leaves quite a big gap for air to get in. Another smaller gap between this stage and fully closed would be handy. Once that visor is closed, there's a locking mechanism which takes a firm grip to make it work. I've found the best way is to grasp the chin bar between finger and thumb and then apply a lot of pressure to this tab so it clicks into the locked position, just like that. Digging a thumb into the lever behind the tab then releases the lock and lets you lift the visor again. That visor is protected against mist by a pinlock insert which comes in the box. It's a pinlock 70, the middle grade in terms of protection, and that's exactly as I'd expect with a lid that costs around £200 like this. If you need to adjust the tension of that insert as well, and it's easy to do as there are adjuster screws on the outside that are dedicated to that job. The insert as well, it covers all of the eye port, and overall I found peripheral vision on this helmet to be excellent. There's a sun visor, which is lowered and raised on a sliding switch just here on the left rim. You get a choice of three drop settings as well. It uses a system that's appearing on quite a few new HJCs. So in standard trim, you get the least amount of drop, but if you remove the cover above the switch, then there's a tab in there to alter the amount of drop that you get. So pushing that tab switch up one more step gives you a bit more drop for the visor, and then pushing it up again so it's at the top gives you the maximum amount of drop available. And as the visor drops beyond the first stage, it also moves towards the chin bar. So that gives you a bit more room and hopefully avoids it coming into contact with your nose. On maximum drop, the visor, the sun visor pretty much fills the eye port, so coverage is excellent. It's not anti-fog coated though, so I found myself having to open the main visor on chilly mornings to let some air come in and clear the sun visor. Right, let's move to the interior. It's fully removable and it's pretty straightforward. Nothing fancy, but I found it comfortable enough. The cheek pads aren't thinned out at the top for glasses, but there seem to be channels in there for spectacle arms anyway. I don't need to wear my specs for riding, but I tried them just to see if they'd go in and I could quite comfortably get the arms in there. There's a chin curtain as standard with the i71. It's removable if you want a bit more airflow inside or if you just find it gets in the way. And the strap on this helmet has a D-ring fastener. If you get a UK spec i71, then it will have D-rings like this one. In Europe, it's gonna have a micrometric ratchet. 
Now, on the inside, there are recesses for intercom speakers behind the cheek pads. They're designed to accommodate the official HJC Smart intercom speakers, but other speakers will fit in there. I tried a pair of 40 millimeter Cardo speakers, which sometimes are too big for helmet recesses and they fit it in just fine. The helmet is prepared for those HJC comms. You can choose from the 21B, which is a Bluetooth only unit, or the 50B, which is more sophisticated and runs both Bluetooth and mesh. Both of those are made for HJC by Senna. I fitted the cheaper unit, the 21B, fits neatly into the lid on the left-hand side with the control module just here, and then a main unit that slots into a cavity at the neck. I used it to connect to my phone for music, as a headset for TomTom -tom sat nav instructions, and also for bike to bike comms. It worked well for all of that, and I preferred having it integrated into the lid rather than having a separate unit clamped or stuck to the exterior of the helmet. We're working on a separate review of the 21B and also the more expensive 50B, and we'll add links to the description below as soon as we get those published. Now, I liked having the intercom integrated, but that doesn't suit everyone. Some people have already got an intercom that they're perfectly happy with, and they really don't want to buy another one. The spec for the HJC intercoms is quite high, as is the price, and that will also be a barrier for some people. Fitting something other than the HJC unit will be an issue as the mounting setup for the HJC intercom does compromise fitting an external intercom instead. The speakers should fit in, as I said, but a separate intercom will probably need to be stuck to the outside with a self-adhesive mount, and it'll probably end up in a location that's less than ideal, maybe further towards the back of the helmet. Right, let's get into the nuts and bolts of sizing, approvals, and prices. The i71 is available in sizes from extra small up to double extra large, and there are three shell sizes. Helmet sizes extra small and small share the smallest of the three shells. The middle shell covers helmet sizes medium and large, and the biggest shell is for lid sizes XL and 2XL. In the previous i70, I had to wear a large rather than the medium that I would normally wear. With this one, the fit is much more conventional, and I wore a medium in this helmet, so I think sizing has probably come back into line with most other HJCs. For approvals, the i71 meets the latest ECE 2206 standard for the road, which all new helmet models launched from 2023 onwards have to meet. It's also ACU Gold approved for use on UK tracks. As we record this, it's way too early for a rating from the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Programme, but if and when one is revealed, then we'll add that info to the description below. Okay, pricing. In plain colours, the i71 is £199.99, and in graphics like this one, it's £229.99. Right, so here's my take on the i71. I found it to be a decent lid for the money. It's a bit heavy, which may be an issue on longer journeys, and for my riding, an anti-fog sun visor would be preferable. That's not all that common to get an anti-fog sun visor on helmets at this price, but there are some brands who have lids for this money with one of those, like Scorpion and Nolan, to name just two. The comms integration for this helmet is, I think, a bit of a bigger issue for a lot of people. Even the cheaper of the two HJC intercoms is still £299.99, which is at least 70 quid more than the price of the helmet. Normally, I'd just say stick another intercom on there and you'll be fine, but the mountings for the official intercom make that a bit tricky. I mean, the location won't be ideal, which I think is a bit of a shame. Right, so those are my negatives, but there are plenty of positives as well. The ventilation is very good and it stands out compared to other helmets I've tried that cost this sort of money. Peripheral vision is also excellent. And if you can stretch to 300 quid for an intercom, then having it integrated into the lid does make a much slicker experience. So those are my negatives and my positives for HJC's new for 2023 helmet. I hope it tells you everything you wanted to know about the HJC i71, but if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.